Alright, so as most of you guys know, we're getting a brand new box in about six to seven days time, coming with a whole bunch of zombie support. Now that's not confirmed by the way, when we're actually getting the box, we're just assuming it's going to be like the 31st or something based on previous years, but it's probably going to be about a week away. And because it's about a week away, I still have absolutely but all content to upload. So I thought, might as well just make another tier list video because they're kind of fun to make and I've got nothing else to do right now. So that's all we're doing today. I'm going to go through all the latest art types and all the new support that's going to be coming in the brand new box and just give you guys a general prediction of where I think it's going to land once it all releases. Is it going to be a top tier tier zero art type or are they going to be completely unplayable garbage? That's basically what we're doing today. Now a bit of a warning beforehand, if you do happen to be, if you do happen to have clicked on this video after the box is released for whatever reason, uh, don't watch it or don't take it at face value. This is purely predictions based on what I've seen so far, what I've read, a few of the combos I've taken a look at, and just what I've gone through currently. So it's not going to be, it's just not going to be set in stone. These cards, I can guarantee you, are either going to be much better or much worse. This is going to be a completely wrong tier list. All these cards are just, it's too hard to give you a guaranteed prediction. I'm pretty confident on some of these art types like Shiranui, but everything else in here, completely up for a debate where you want to put them or where you think they might land so feel free to give your opinions as well in the comments down below on where you think I'm wrong where you think I'm right or just where you think these cards are going to land in general because yeah purely prediction feel free to come back in a couple of weeks and make fun of me when I'm completely wrong and messed up the tier list entirely that's also that's always fun to do so yeah let's get into it now just a reminder if you guys are enjoying this kind of content and want to see some more videos from me or want to see some deck lists from me once all this content is released Remember to, remember to subscribe to the channel. I'm currently extremely close to 100k, I'm about 8,000 subs away. So if you'd like to subscribe, that'd be very nice. And yeah, let's just get into this tier list. All right, so first of all, we have Shiranui. Now, by the way, as I'm going through these deck lists, I'll be showing off a couple of the combos that people have been submitting on the Duel Links Meta Discord, showing off some of the cool replays for potential combos to be doing once all the cards releases as these are very good showings of just how good the deck might be even before they're released so and yeah one of these is going to be definitely for Shiranui because Shiranui I'm guaranteeing it it's going to be a top tier deck list which tier it's going to be in whether it's going to be a tier 3 tier 1 tier 2 where it's going to be that's all up for debate but I'm very certain it'll be a top tier deck I'm thinking around tier 2 it seems like it's doing basically what my Akashi does but in some ways better and in some ways worse. It's definitely more susceptible to DD Crow, but it also seems like it's actual turn one, what it sets up is on average going to be generally better. And it's always going to be just a one card combo. So let me just show you, well, not always gonna be one card combo, but it can be extended upon to be multiple cards, but it can just become from a one card combo. I was about to show you. All right, that was terrible English, but let's just, <laughs> let's just keep going. So this is a combo by Noras. I have no idea if that's, how, if that's how you pronounce the name. I'm hoping I'm not butchering that. But this is a one card combo using just Mizuki. Also keep in mind, there's actually a lot of combos for this deck list. This is just one of them. And there's also a bunch of one card combos for this deck as well. This is just the best one from what this guy is saying. So let me show it off. So the skill starts off with a Spectral Sword in the Graveyard. And the first thing he does is activate the skill to, to discard the Mizuki and search for a Shiranui monster, which is going to be the Squire. You can also search for a Shiranui card in general, so you can search for a spell card as well. But in this case, you search for a monster. Squire, Squire effect summons out a shade from the deck. These two become your level 7. Alright, activating the Spectral Sword in the graveyard. Shut up, Siri. <laughs> Alright. These two are now going to be summoning out a Synchro monster. Alright, that triggers the Squire for a draw on a discard, so that's a bit of hand fixing right there, getting rid of some garbage and potentially drawing into some back row or something. Alright, these two are going to become a Link Monster going into the Vampire Sucker. You're going to be seeing a bunch of this card in this video, because this card is actually really nice, as it just basically gives you a draw. So, when, when they summon back a Zombie Monster, he'll get a draw from it. Alright, so he activates the skill here, I think, putting the uh, Synchro Monsters back in the extra deck. I think he forgot to put the other Synchro Monsters in the Banish pile at this point, but I think he fixed that later on. Alright, activating Mizuki's effect, banishing it, summoning level 3. And that gives you the card draw. He's going to banish this, bring out the two dudes in the Banish pile. And those are going to end on your um, another monster on the field. And then he, yeah, he corrects himself, puts the Synchro Monsters in the extra deck. The banish pile makes the link three, and that is the end of the combo. So this combo ends on a special summon from the skill saga, which can bring back the 
Sun Saga during the opponent's turn, which can then shuffle back the Shogun Saga and the other Synchro Monster in the graveyard, giving yourself two removals of your opponent's field from just one Link Monster. Keep in mind, this is just one card, and he's ended on still four cards in hand. He still has the three cards from the start, the draw discarded card. It's an insane combo, one card, four cards in hand, and he's got two lots of disruption. So, and plenty of follow-up too, by the way. So if he survives the turn, he's going to be very, very happy and well off. So I'd be surprised if this deck is anything but tier two. It could even be potentially tier one, but mm, it's pretty hard for decks to really make it into that tier. So I'm just going to go safe and put it in tier two. Blue Eyes. So Blue Eyes has to be at least, at very minimum, a rogue level deck, because current Blue Eyes I would consider consider pretty rogue level. I think there was actually a top KC Cup, top 100 Blue Eyes deck not too long ago, just based on the, the latest skill that was released, so at bare minimum it can't be worse than it already is, and I'd say it's sort of rogue-ish. Maybe it's more high playable sort of thing, but just for the sake of, uh, sake of the video, it's, I'm gonna put it in rogue tier for starters. And then with the new support, it's kind of weird, because the new support, I think, helps the deck, but at the same time, I don't like the new skill with Blue Eyes. There just isn't really enough good targets for it. I don't think it's better than the current iteration Blue Eyes skill. So, I think the new support is just going to be added to the current Blue Eyes deck. And does it help it all that much? Not really. It's The, the new support's kind of nice, but at the same time, I just don't think it really... It doesn't really change the deck a whole lot, especially considering because of how the skill works where you're forced to play a certain amount of blue eyes cards, blue eyes monsters in your deck list, any new cards you're adding to it are just making your deck list bigger and going over 20 cards, because there's no way you can fit the new support into 20 cards, there's just no way. So it's going to go over 20 cards, make the deck a little bit more bricky, but maybe a little more powerful. I think it's going to end up basically the same, I'm going to put it in rogue tier, I don't think it's changing much. Alright, now we've got the Cyber Synchro deck. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't have a whole lot of faith in this, as I think it's just strictly worse than current Cybers, and I think it's strictly worse than that OTK Cybers thing we've currently got, which I've forgotten the name of, but that thing that just summons the big dude, hits your opponent for a billion, I think it's literally worse than that. So, I think I have a, uh, I do have a replay for this somewhere. Let me have a look. Cyber, Cybers. Here we go, here's a, here's a re, re, replay from Con. So this is a one-card combo, which I think is how the skill's intended to be played, but it's not... Yeah, it doesn't really do a whole lot. Compare this to, like, the Shiro Nui combo, by the way. So one-card combo with just your Synchron. Alright, so revealing it grabs you a Gadget, puts it in the graveyard, Gadget revives, these two become the Link, summons a token, this is you a search for the Synchron. Uh, puts that in the deck, these two become the first of your synchros, summon this to the field, grabs this, gives you a card draw because you sent this guy to the graveyard, and you're ending on no disruption, just a singular card draw. Now I've seen some other comments around this that maybe you can end on a different synchro monster if you don't go for a certain link or something, we're not super versed in this deck yet, but if this is what you're doing, if your main goal is to summon this thing, the deck is doomed. This card is not great at all. So if this is what you're going for, I'm not completely uh, convinced on this deck. Maybe there's some other ways with different extenders and whatnot, but if you're going for other extender replays and all that kind of stuff, I think you should just play a standard um, Cyburst deck with the current skills with Gox. I think that it's going to be better than this. There just isn't any good targets for the Synchro Summons in Cyburst, so I just don't... I have zero faith in this deck list. I don't think it's going to be unplayable, because unplayable means the deck is literally not going to function. And I think this one is probably going to at least, at least function, but it's, it's not great. I don't recommend it. Alright, next up we have Pure Zombie. So this is, you'll notice there's a bunch of zombie deck lists in here. This one is pure, so just completely discounting any other variation for now, just pure. Alright, so I think this will be rogue. I don't think it's going to be tier 3. The main issue with this deck list is that's going to keep it back, in my opinion, is DD Crow is going to be very, very rampant. I'm not sure the play rate currently, but at least in tournaments. If we type in uh, Hand Trap. Gee, we might even type in Hand Trap. It's literally right. It's ba this, this, uh, this list is not based on popularity, by the way. You'll notice DD Crow is right here. It's the what, 10th most post popular card in the game currently? This is not ladder stats, this is based on like tournament play and king of game submissions, but 
it's gonna be pretty high. I'm not sure what it is in the game, like I said, but it's pretty goddamn high. And Crow, it's going to shit on this deck completely. Shiranui has some ways they can play through it, sort of, with things like the, um... Because when you banish their stuff, a lot of the time they can bring back stuff from the banished pile. Has some, some sort of ways to play through it. This has just... If, they, if you banish your main boss monster, whatever his name is, the Boulder Cock or whatever his name is, <laughs> if they banish that thing, I don't see this deck list functioning at all. And it's already going to be like a two card combo sort of a deck. It's not something you can just sort of one card combo unless you just ha happen to hard draw Zombie World, which in that case it's, I guess, one ca two cards still anyway. So I'm very not very much not convinced Diddy Crow's going to shit on this. Also not to mention, if they don't have DD Crow and you get your full combo off, if your opponent's playing... The other card, the uh, ninth most popular card, they MST your field spell, your boss monster does nothing. Not great for a deck based around like two card combos, gambling on mills, and just hoping you hit like a light sworn mill combo. It's not even a very consistent combo, it's just play praying to god your mill most of the time, I think. So, yeah, I don't like gambling, I don't like the fact that you're going to lose to MST, I don't like the fact you're going to lose to um, DD Crow, and these two cards are just way too popular for this kind of thing. Yeah, I just don't have a whole lot of faith in it, so I'm going to put it there. Next up, we have Vampire. I'm going to put this in playable tier. Now, the reason Vampire's on here, for you guys that don't know, is Vampire are also zombies. So, let me see the replay in here, because I know someone made a replay on this. Mrs. or oh, Mrs. Melista? That's probably... I have no idea who that is, but there you go. Sorry for butchering your name. Melensa? Oh my god, I'm not even going to bother keep pronouncing I'm just embarrassing myself further. Alright, move it on. Alright, so this is starting off as a two card combo, so... Not a great start. Normally one card combo is what you like to see for proving a deck is good. Two card combos are like, uh, I mean, probably alright, but let's let's go anyway. So we're going to summon our Uni Zombie, sending your Retainer. Retainer can discard to summon them back. This will give you a search for your spell card. Oh. Don't know how to pull that on my screen, anyway. Alright, grabs the Domain. Domain gives you an extra normal summon for the turn. Summons back to the field by sending the dom Domain after it's already used its effect. Searching for the Scourge. Scourge can summon back, or summon itself to the field after changing the level. Alright, should be summoning it with the extra normal- Oh no, sorry, he's going for the Link Summon first. Summoning the Vampire Sucker. There's your summon. This will bring back the links. It sounds back a zombie. These two become a Beatrice. Beatrice can send your uh, Banshee. The Banshee banishes itself with the field spell. Then during your opponent's turn, during their standby phase, you can use it again to send your boss monster who can then revive himself. And that is your end combo. Ending another draw there. So for a two card combo, you're ending on just your Baldurok really. You've gotten one draw, I guess, during the opponent's turn. Uh, this might not be optimal, by the way. This is literally just one person's replay I gra grabbed from the Discord, so this could be completely suboptimal. I have no idea. But if this is what you're trying to do in Vampire, whilst it's cool, there's better ways to do this Beatrice combo, as I'm about to show you. So, cool combo. I'm not super, yeah, liking two-card combo type stuff, though. So, we're going to keep him in just a playable tier, I guess. Alright, next up we have Destiny Hero. Now, this is something a lot of you guys are going to be real confused as to why it's on here. Now this... This is interesting, because Destiny Hero currently... How are they doing? Are they, are they um, tiered? Tiered? Uh, they're, not, they're not currently tiered, are they? They're not, right? They're very close to being tiered, though. They're definitely a high, high rogue tier sort of a deck. Very, they have high chance of, yeah, they've topped in a bunch of tournaments recently. So I suspect with this new edition, a lot of people are going to be excited to play it. And if enough people play the deck just for pure excitement alone, just based on just a lot of people playing a high rogue level deck, it might be able to bump its way into tier 3 just based on just getting a few results. So I don't know where I'm going to put this. I, I think it's probably, realistically, it's probably not much better than current D, um, Destiny Hero, but... Could it be tier 3? It could be. So let me show you why. So this is what they're doing with it. So if you guys that don't know, any Destiny Hero monster at all is going to give you a one card combo into your zombie stuff. 
the Destiny Hero has become a zombie deck. Because the skill restriction for some reason is only for your main phase, so you can do anything you want during the standby phase, which is when you summon your zombie stuff. So starting off with just a Celestial. Celestial, of course, using the skill, putting your Malicious in Graveyard, grabbing your Poly. Banishing for another Malicious. Activating Poly. By the way, if you've opened any of your zombie monsters, you can use them as part of this fusion summon because it requires just a dark monster, so all your zombie monsters aren't even bricks. You just use them for material. Summon out your Dangerous, like I said, requires a dark monster, so fixes any bricks you got in your hand. Malicious comes back again. That gives you two level sixes. Two level sixes makes a Beatrice. Beatrice can now send your zombie to the graveyard. Grabs you your field spell. And of course during your opponent's standby, sends your zombie who revives itself. So keep in mind this is a one card combo. Your entire hand is going to be still three extra cards of potential set three back row or whatever else you're playing. This is all from a singular Destiny Hero. So is this much better than what current Destiny Hero does? I mean, I would say this end field is probably stronger than current Destiny Hero, because you're ending on, I guess it's more susceptible to things like a Cosmic Cyclone, of course, and again, susceptible to Crow as well. But the difference between this and standard Zombie is if you get hit by a Crow, you get hit by a MST, or you just get absolutely shit on by whatever, you're going to have three back row set. So three back row is going to be a good way to just not die this turn, have potential follow-up or whatever else. If you started with Malicious, you've got your... Oh, sorry, if you started with Celestial, you've got your Celestial here ready to draw a couple of cards. So I think this is probably... It's definitely about as good as what current Destiny Hero does. Is it better? Uh, it's it's roughly the same. I don't think... Because Destiny Hero currently only ends on their one one fusion monster most of the time, right? Or just a, maybe a Link monster or their... Uh, Oh, the big, whatever his name is, fusion monster as well. The one that searches for uh, the fusion spell. And that doesn't even have an effect during your opponent's turn, realistically. So, I think it's it's probably a stronger... It ends on two disruption rather than one disruption that normal Destiny Hero ends on, plus your back row. So, it's probably slightly better, but very weak to book. Very uh, very weak to MST and very weak to um, DD Crow. So, it's probably realistically only a tier 3 deck. A rogue, a rogue deck, but... I wouldn't be surprised if it makes it into tier 3. Alright, speaking of Beatrice combos, this is one I've been cooking. So this is one based on Onomat. So Onomat's another deck that's really good at summoning Beatrice. So let me find my own replay, because I've been cooking this myself. Feel free to join my Discord, by the way. Link in the description. Where the hell are we? Zombie. I don't think I pinned it, because that'd be useful, wouldn't it? Let's see if we can find it. Dueling book. Is that one word? Nope, hang on. Hang on, we'll find it, we'll find it. Is it this one? Oh no, that's the, that's the Destiny Hero one. You would have thought the YouTuber would have provided this beforehand, but don't worry, it's coming, it's coming. Alright, here we go. So this is a two-card combo, sort of. You can do the Beatrice combo by itself with just one card, but if you open, like, any other Onomat stuff, you can end on a rank four as well. So I wanted to show that off. So is this starting off with a Peria plus a pickup? You can make Beatrice of just Peria by itself. So this is it can be technically be done with just a one-card combo, but it's better with multiple. So let me show you what I'm doing. So Pickup is going to be searching for your Onomatopoeia. Peria can now discard the Onomatopoeia, searching for the Gargar Coat and your sister. Summon the sister, searching for revenge. Special summoning this guy who can revive back the Onomatopoeia. Sister adjusting the level so we can go into a Beatrice. Alright, Beatrice is going to be dumping to the graveyard, your dude. Banishing for Zombie World. Reviving. These two cards can now become a rank 4, which is going to be a copy of your Cairngorgon. I have you pronounced this guy's name. Basically, the reason you want to summon this dude is this means you are now completely safe to MST. Your opponent activates MST, you can redirect it to something else, which could be your pickup, for example, or any other back row you've got in your hand. Because this deck plays a lot of spell cards. Because this thing got sent to the graveyard for an XC summon, these dudes are going to be able to get a bit of an attack buff. 
going to your opponent's standby phase, milling your dude, reviving him, and that is your end field. So I like this end field a lot because it's going to be protected from MST, it's protected from Book of Moon or anything that's going to be targeting this guy, and not protected from Droplet, and again, you're still extremely weak to things like DD Crow, for example. And because this deck has very little back row, that's, uh, yeah, same, very same issue as what current, what I said about Zombie, where I said Zombie was like a rogue level sort of a deck. Very same issue, where it's just going to lose to, it's going to lose to your Crow, but at least it doesn't lose to MST. So it's definitely better than that one. If anything, I actually think zo Zombie might even just be playable, not even rogue. And this is, this is rogue. I think that's a, that's probably a bit, bit of a better estimate. I'm not super keen on the whole, yeah, Zombie deck. I think it's definitely, actually we'll give it a, uh, Screw it. Let's make it a. <laughs> uh, Rogue point five. I'm gonna put him in there. So I think it's pretty, I think this card. This is definitely a worse deck than these guys. But calling it playable is probably a bit mean. So I'll put it in a. I put it in Rogue point five. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Because Mat, I think Mat's not likely to be a top tier deck. Because like I said, it loses to your crow. It might sneak in there just based off of just people wanting to play it for fun. But yeah, it, it, it's just a rogue level deck. And Destiny here, I think, is also a rogue level deck. Alright, then we've got Galaxy Eyes. So, Galaxy Eyes, this is a really hard deck to predict. Because trying to watch replays for this and seeing what people are building is all over the place. There's so much new support and just old support for this deck currently in the game that it makes it really hard to judge. Uh, let me grab any replay because I know there's a bunch for them. Let's see what Atlas was doing here. Yeah, this deck can do a bunch of things. So this guy, so Atlas, by the way, has played like a, a weird variation of this deck where it's like, a, it's full gas. He just grabs a bunch of gas stuff. He's going to do it with just these, actually, I want to see one of these test hand ones. They're more fun to watch. Because he was playing like a, um, I don't know if he had a, fun, let's see if I can find one. So he was playing a very, just full gas style deck with a lot of cool stuff going on. Let's see. I really should have grabbed these replays before doing the video, but I think if you're 20 minutes through this video, you probably don't mind waiting a little bit longer for me to find this silly replay. Yeah, so is anyone boards like this, by the way? Vimana, the dude here, this could also be the other rank 5, depending on if it's limited or not. And your Galaxy Eyes thing for removal. So that's three lots of removal here. Three lots of disruption turn one. But it's not like a one card combo or something. It's all just based on pure gas deck type stuff. Stuff like this, where it's like, you're playing three trade in. This dude just searched for your um, level eight dragons. Got three of the Photon card that summons the two, um, I think that summons two dudes who are paying some life points. So we're having to find the actual replays of him doing this. There's another example, any on the Constellar card. Okay, here we go. Alright, this is what I was looking for. Just a pure gas hand. Wait, is this the same replays before? I'm so dumb. Whatever. Anyway, discarding, searching for a dragon. I can't wait to find the other ones. We'll just go with this. Using the skill, searching for brave. Is that it? Who even is that? Alright, summoning the dude. Normal summoning it, I think. Grabs your link monster. This card can now reveal to special summon, I assume. Making your link, and that's ending it. So that's a two card combo ending on two. But yeah, he was going over plenty of other plays that were ending on uh, any on different fields. But by the looks of things, that's the only person I've been seeing sort of testing the deck. And it's looking... Galaxy Eyes going second is always going to have the whole Galaxy Eyes exceed stuff, where it's going to be removing whatever your opponent has. So going second isn't really the issue, it's more going first is the issue. Is that like a sus sus consistent enough combo to be like a tier 3 deck list? I'm not sure about that one. I'm optimistic for it, so I'd like to put it in tier 3, but it's it's hard. It might, it might not even be good enough for there. I think, if anything, these two are the highest potential decks to do anything not rogue level, but realistically, they're probably not going to, uh, not going to manage it. I don't know, I don't, Galaxy Eyes is so hard to rate. There's so much support and so many skills to read through and go through and cards to test. This could be literally anywhere here. Literally anywhere. So I'm just going to put it in Copium Tier 3. 
Alright, moving on. Next deck. Dark Magician. Okay. Ah. Uh... I have I always have trouble putting Dark Magician higher than Rogue just because it's Dark Magician. The current skill is going to definitely make the deck better than it was, but not much better to be like a top tier level deck, I doubt. It still has all the same sort of weaknesses Dark Magician has, where your opponent has like MST for your circle, that's really annoying. For MST before you've even even been able to do your um do your summon, you won't get any removal at all. The quick play spell helps a bunch. So, I guess this ends on slightly more removal, more consistently now. Going second, it's still pretty... Eh, it's not unplayable, I guess. But yeah, I, th I don't think it's higher than Rogue. There's just no way. Dark Magician is Dark Magician. It's very, very unlikely it ever gets higher than, than Rogue level. I'd like it to be higher. I think it's it's got potential. You know what, this is not a category, because these are the... <laughs> I don't, I don't think these are... These ones actually have potential to do something, I think. I don't think that they're actually tier 3, though. Hmm. Actually, that's kind of a pussy way to do this tier list. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's so hard. The Dark Magician looks like... It, it looks like it's going to be better, but it's... I don't know, man. I don't know. I, 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 I have so much trouble putting Dark Magician higher than Rogue, just for how Dark Magician is. There's just no way. Alright, because so we can compare it to the current dark, current tier 3 decks. What is even on there? Earth Machine, Rocket, S-Force. Is it better than any of these? I d doubt it's better than S-Force. Or Earth Machine. I don't know, I don't think so. Tachyon. I don't like to look at this deck much at all. The issue with Tachyon is, from what I've seen, all people are ending on is your Tachyon and your Counter Trap. That is not an end field. That is one negate. Um, I guess if you if it's like a one card combo play, which it might be, I, I don't know, I don't think it is, but if it is a one card combo play, ending on a negate is okay. But if your entire field is based around just one MST lose. It's like similar to how Zombie loses, but even worse, just one lot of disruption. At least this has two. This is a... Uh... Yeah, I think this is going to be one of those decks that's going to make good for YouTube highlights, but not so much for actual... Not so much for actual gameplay-wise. Not Definitely not a tournament-level deck, because I don't think. Just based on early viewings, I don't think it's much higher than that. And that, I think, is probably the tier list. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff here that we moved around. Destiny Hero could be just a rogue level deck. Galaxy Eyes, I'm hoping, could be playable just based on just pure gamba hands. But realistically, it's probably this, which is a very ugly looking tier list. It isn't super uh, promising for a new box for people that are interested in building into it. But there is certainly a lot of, play lot of, lot of room for movement in this. Any of these, I think, could be up here just based on... Yeah, any of these could be up here, but realistically, it's not likely. It's probably going to look like this. Galaxy Eyes, I think, probably has the highest chance if people are uh, willing to experiment enough with it. But, yeah, I'm not super... I'm not super keen on most of these decks in here, I'll be honest. Shiranui, definitely going to be good. The rest of them could be fucking anywhere. And, yeah... I think we'll end this video with a bit of copium though, so for just, just for copium's sake, let's do this. Then when people screenshot it, they can make fun of me more. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you didn't leave a like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, hope to see you guys with all the stuff releases, with the box uh, opening stream and all that kind of stuff. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you see the next one. Laters.